In this week's Training Focus, I want to talk about making some initial assessments when you get on the scene. You know, it seems pretty straightforward. What, what are we assessing? What are we looking for? But there's a lot of nuances to it, and there's a lot of things that investigators forget. And I want to address this from both a coroner perspective, a medical legal death investigator's perspective, and a detective or patrol officer perspective, because we both have to make our initial assessments. And when an officer gets there, I say law enforcement officer gets there, their initial assessment is going to somewhat be different than a coroner or medical examiner for two reasons. The first is how they're perceiving the scene is different. When the law enforcement officer arrives, let's say it's a patrol officer, they're assessing the scene for signs of life, safety, you know, what the overall scene up looks like, appears like, do they need to separate anybody else, take anybody into custody, things like that. When a detective gets on a scene, a police detective, well, they're assessing the scene, looking at the criminal aspects of the scene. And they're looking for evidence and they're looking for things that will prove elements of crime. And they should be making sure that the, the, the correct people are detained and that there is someone, them or someone else, that is leading the investigation and making sure that the scene is protected and all of that. And then the, the evidence is collected and they start walking through the facts, whether it be this, the right then and weeks to come. And then from a coroner perspective, I, I, when I use coroner, I'm going to say CME. From a CME perspective, it's a coroner or a medical examiner investigator. They're also assessing the scene, looking at the evidence as a whole, but more so where it involves the body. Now, just a quick example. We're going to be looking at the body and the injuries of the body, things that are surrounding the body, the position, PMIs, all of that stuff to start answering a lot of questions. We may or may not be concerned that the bathroom window in the back of the house has been broken out. Now, that's a, that's a piece of evidence. That's certainly something detectives would want to follow through on. But that may or may not have anything to do with the case. And from a medical legal perspective, CME perspective, that is important because it may eventually help us rule whether or not we're going to rule this a homicide or an accident if that window means something or whatever. But on the scene, we're looking at the body proper and the area initially around the body or a blood trails around the house or something like that. Even though there are three separate entities looking at a scene, a lot of things are crossed between the two. So let's look at a few of those. So one of the first things that you have to keep in mind is everyone needs to cooperate. The law enforcement, the CMEs, the EMS, the fire departments, everybody needs to cooperate. And where I see problems with cooperation is more in the CME and law enforcement realm. Some work very well together, some do not. And then of course there's those in the middle. But scene cooperation is very important because everyone has the same goal. A law enforcement officer cannot complete an investigation or close an investigation without a final ruling from the CME. And the CME may not be able to make a, a qualified final ruling without information that the law enforcement has. So each of you should work together and know each other's job and, and to ensure that not only do you assist each other in the first observations, you also do not do something that will hinder the other person's first observations. For instance, law enforcement should not be moving bodies around. They should not be manipulating bodies. Now, I understand that there are some agencies that's got a mutual aid agreement with a law enforcement officer, detective that does certain things because then the coroner comes in later. And with that, you know, we go back and see one of my other episodes on there's a right way to be a coroner and then there's the other. Sometimes coroners don't do everything they should do. But nonetheless, we try to we're going to in this episode, we're going to try to stay in our lane and we're going to talk about what the law enforcement does and what the coroner and me does. So initial assessment, you're just arriving on the scene. I want to say from the CME perspective, so from the law enforcement perspective as well, you're looking at the scene overall. But let's take the detective and a CME and let's put them in the room where the body is. Now, everyone should be out of that house, should be out of the area, should not be in the area where this investigation is taking place. 
Now I'm going to sidestep just a little bit and talk about cordon off a scene area. If it's in, if it's inside a house in a bedroom, then you should probably strip that entire house of people, move them somewhere else so that the only people in there are the investigators and the body. If it's outside or if it's a little bigger building or something like that, you might think about using a two stage cordoned off area. For instance, the public stays out of the yellow tape. But then the only people, then you cordon off an area inside of that with red tape or blue tape, something different. If you don't have anything else, use another yellow. Public stays out of the first yellow. Law enforcement is inside the first yellow. But the, the red tape or the second yellow, only the specific people involved in the case can be in there. Not looky-loos, not people coming in and out. And that's a visual barrier to keep them out. So we're going to go with the perspective here that that has been done. Everybody is out. And now we're going to slow down. If I see a mistake in investigations, not only with me and in my area, I'm bad for it sometimes, and I have to catch myself. Sometimes we get in a hurry. There is no reason to get into a hurry. And generally when we're in a hurry, it's because we've got either another case or a personal matter pushing us or law enforcement is pushing us if you're there as a CME or if you're there as a law enforcement, somebody in your agency is pushing you to go, or it's just a chaotic scene. And with that, people's emotions get hyped up. And so we rush and we certainly rush in, in baby cases and we don't want to do that. So slow down. You're going to assess the scene. Slow down. Remember, you get one chance at your first chance. When that law enforcement officer gets there, they should be taking overview photographs because when you've got EMS there or any other personnel coming in or out, the scene changes. So those photographs are important. So you only get one chance at your first chance. So make it very, very detailed on your assessment. Go into the room. Let's, let's just use for a, a moment that we have a building with a couple of different rooms in it, maybe a house, maybe an office building. And there is a body in one of the rooms. And it appears as though there was something took place in that room. And, but there is a body in there. So go to the room, right inside the door, just barely walk in, if at all. Stop, look, and listen. Just really take in the room. And you want to be asking yourself these questions. What is the apparent or most likely cause of death? Do you, do, can you readily see that? What is the apparent or most, most likely cause of death? And then is what you're being told match what you're seeing? Is the time that does the, does the PMIs, does the body look like some, you know, someone says, well, I've seen them this morning, but they look like they've been dead a lot longer than that. Um, there's a clothing match, different things like that. Is what you're seeing match what you're being told? Are you looking at something and you've heard witnesses or you've been told by law enforcement or something just doesn't feel right? Obviously, we want to trust our gut. If you've been around for a while, you need to trust your gut. And so you're looking around this room. Now, these are first initial assessments. And this is where sometimes if you're not doing this, it can create a little bit of a rub sometimes with law enforcement because if you're uh, if you start doing this with law enforcement or you're a cme and you walk into a room and you just stand there and you just look around not doing anything they're gonna like what are you doing let's go let's get this done stop and look look at every wall look at the floor look at the ceiling are there missing light bulbs are there missing pictures is a table knocked over are there items on the table knocked over is there a layer of dust on a nightstand or table, but yet there's something missing from there? You can see that there is dust is everywhere except for this one spot. You know, are there dresser drawers open and things thrown on the floor? Does it look like there's a burglary or does it look like it's a fake burglary? What looks right and what looks wrong? And make notes. Why is this dresser drawer open? Write that down. It looks like there's something gone off the wall. The ligature on the neck does not look right. It look, this, is, this is not a normal suicide ligature. Or why is there one shoe on and one shoe off? It looks like his pants are on backwards. Why? And you're just answering or asking all these questions. You're writing all this stuff down. There's, there's a light bulb out. Is it broke out or burn out? Did the lamp get knocked over and it, and it busted the bulb? Or did it just burn out because it's old? Look at every aspect of the scene before you ever get to the body which also means you're looking at the floor for maybe blood drops or maybe fiber or maybe the carpet is disrupted. If that's the case, you want to avoid those areas, right? Maybe you use uh, what we call stepping blocks or you put some pads down to walk on or, or something, but you want to avoid those areas. There's a reason why you want to avoid something or pay special attention to it. You can't do that when you just rush in and start rolling bodies around. Look at every scene with an investigative triangle theory. 
which means if you look at a triangle, the scene is at the top. So the very top point is the scene. And then on each side, the left side is the body, the right side is history. Now, history is victimology, which we've talked about, history of the scene, history of the person, the last 72 hours of the life. History can be a lot of things, but there's history and then the body and then the scene encompasses all of it. Now, remember, the body is the most important piece of evidence in that room. I don't care about knives and guns and drugs and ligatures, bombs. I don't care. The body. The body will tell us. So after you've done your initial assessment of the scene, you're, you're stopped, you've looked around, you've written down questions you want answered, then you go about finding those answers. Then you go to the body. And the initial body is the same thing. We want to look at the body as a whole before we start manipulating it. What position is it in? Make sure we're photographing everything. And when you're doing your assessment of the scene, you photograph, photograph, photograph. If you think you need 100 photographs, take 150. Take 200. Photograph everything in that room because you can come back later and look at it. You want overalls. You want mid-range. You want close-ups. Get to the body. Take pictures of the body. Take uh, of, of its position. And then as you start looking in pockets and as you start manipulating the body, checking for rigor, is lividity fixed? What do the eyes look like? Do the eyes have anything evidentiary about them? Then you start photographing that as well. But you also may come up with questions like, well, why is there uh, sclera drying on this side but not the other? Why is this? Why does it look like lividity is on top of the body and the bottom of the body? That means a person's been moved. Why is this? Why is that? Hey, here's an injury that round or oblong or what made this injury? And that's all part of this assessment. Then after the assessment is done, whether that be the entire room, the entire house, the body, all that included, then you go to processing the scene. Then you and the, M the, the CME and the detective, they each have their roles. Then they start processing the scene. You've identified possible evidence during your assessment. You have maybe have placed numbers down or you've done something. To, hey, we need, to, we need to look at this more or collect that or the detective may want this fingerprinted or this swabbed or... And then you start the process of dissecting the scene and you start taking the scene apart. You start collecting evidence. You start putting stuff away. And when you're done and gone, the scene is totally destroyed. The evidence is gone. Uh, things have been moved. The body's no longer in situ. So everything is destroyed. But you have to start from a point of assessing the scene to think about what it is we need to do. Where do we need to start? What else is in this scene we need to Think about and remember as we go through it. Make notes, then go back and start processing. And of course, you'll be taking more photographs as you process. There is a right way to do a scene assessment. And the grab and load is not the proper way. The walking in with a preconceived notion of, it looks like suicide, call the coroner, or it looks like a natural death, call the coroner. Even in a natural death, if you've got an old man, old lady in bed, did not wake up this morning, medical history, long medical history, and it looks natural. Are they in the house alone? Do they have somebody to live with them? What about the medications? Are the medications in order? Have they been given correctly? You do a body exam. Uh, are there any bruising, any unexplained marks? Uh, you know, or do they look like they've been well cared for or neglected? You can answer all those questions. And then if you still feel like you have a most probable natural causes death, then it's an, you can rule it in natural causes if you're a CME. If you decide you need toxicology or autopsy, you can, you can do that. But that that's, takes a little bit of assessment. I know that there are some agencies out there, big, usually it's the big agencies where they talk to a police officer and a CME talks to a police officer on the scene. They ask them some questions. They, you know, might do FaceTime, interestingly enough, and look at the scene. And they ask the questions and I guess that's kind of, uh, scene assessment not really but it's because of again the number of calls and the manpower and and they don't have enough money to buy enough people and things like that i get that kind of but even that you're you're relying on a police officer to tell you that things don't look right and it takes the cme and it takes a police officer detective somebody trained to look from two different perspectives on a scene to decide if they both agree that things are in order or not in order because each person has a job and each person is looking at the scene differently and it takes both. And without a CME on the scene, 
there's a, there, it's lost. Something is lost there. So a scene assessment is important. Hard to make decisions down the road without an initial scene assessment. So keep that in mind. The next time you go on a call, the next time you get a death call, when you start rushing in there, you know, dragging a cot, carrying a body bag, stop. And think, whoa, wait, you know what? Let's, let's look at this again. Let, let's look at this scene. Let's assess this scene. Let's see what kind of questions we're going to have before we just start bagging and tagging. If you do that, if you do that, you'll find your investigations will go a lot smoother and you will have less questions come up later on because you would have thought about them and answered them up front. Are you wanting to further your education in death investigation or maybe you're looking to enter the field? The Death Investigation Academy is where you need to start. With accredited training, both online and in classroom, you're sure to find the courses and education you are looking for. The Death Investigation Academy is nationally recognized and is a proven leader in education for the medical legal death investigation industry as well as law enforcement. Check out the Academy today by clicking over to deathinvestigation.training. Again, that's www.deathinvestigation.training.